Donald Carter stood defiantly before the Galactic Council, the fate of humanity hanging in the balance. The avian Iridians had presented damning evidence of human aggression, expansion, and advanced weaponry. They demanded sanctions to neuter Earth's military might. Humans are a plague upon this galaxy, squawked Councillor Corvus, his feathers ruffled with barely contained rage. A barbaric species that lusts for endless war and conquest. The council chamber erupted in a cacophony of shouting. Alien representatives pounded tables with tentacles, paws and appendages. They called for humanity's head on a spike. Carter gripped the podium, knuckles white. He knew he had to convince these extraterrestrial bureaucrats that humans were more than just warmongers, that Earth's sons and daughters bled on countless battlefields to protect the weak and maintain galactic order. If he failed, the Terran Republic would be gutted, left defenseless against hostile alien empires. He opened his mouth to speak, to make his case, but the words never came. Alarm klaxons blared. Red light strobed. The Iridian homeworld was under attack by an unknown alien armada. And so began humanity's greatest challenge yet. The Galactic Council Chamber descended into pandemonium as the Iridian delegation's communicators lit up with dire reports from their homeworld. Councillor Corvus, his earlier bravado replaced by sheer terror, slammed his winged fist on the table. This is an outrage, an unprovoked attack on our sovereign soil, Corvus squawked, his voice cracking. The Iridian defense fleet, it's already been destroyed. Enemy troops are landing on the surface as we speak. Gasps and murmurs rippled through the chamber. Representatives huddled together, whispering frantically and casting nervous glances at the Iridian delegation. Who is responsible for this attack? demanded the insectoid Councillor Zix, her antennae twitching with agitation. Corvus consulted his data pad, his feathered hands trembling. Our intelligence indicates it's the Zorgon Empire. Those ruthless bastards have been expanding their territory for decades, but we never thought they'd dare strike at a council member world. The mere mention of the Zorgon sent a chill through the room. They were known as the Scourge of the Galaxy, a brutal and technologically advanced race that conquered and enslaved weaker species without mercy. Corvus turned to the council, his eyes wide with desperation. Esteemed colleagues, I implore you, the Iridian people need your help. We cannot face the Zorgons alone. An uncomfortable silence fell over the chamber. Representatives shifted in their seats, avoiding eye contact with the pleading Iridian. While we sympathize with your plight, Councillor Corvus, began the reptilian Councillor Sath, choosing his words carefully, we must consider the safety of our own worlds. Openly opposing the Zorgons could paint a target on all our backs. Murmurs of agreement echoed through the room. No one wanted to risk drawing the Zorgans' wrath upon themselves. Donald Carter watched the proceedings with a mix of disgust and opportunity. These spineless bureaucrats were willing to let the Iridians burn to save their own hides. But this was humanity's chance to prove their worth, to show the galaxy that Terrans were more than just warmongers. Carter stepped forward, his voice cutting through the chatter. Councillors, if I may? All eyes turned to the human representative, some curious, others wary. The Terran Republic stands ready to aid our Iridian allies in their hour of need. I propose a joint human-Iridian military operation to repel the Zorgon invaders and secure Iridia. Shocked whispers rippled through the chamber. A human offering to help an alien species? It was unheard of. Carter pressed on, his voice growing stronger. This isn't just about Iridia. The Zorgans are a threat to us all. If we allow them to conquer one council world unopposed, what's to stop them from targeting others? We must take a stand, together, before it's too late. The council members exchanged uncertain glances. Carter's words rang true, but the prospect of allying with humans, even temporarily, made many uneasy. Councillor Zick spoke up, her voice cautious. And what assurances do we have that your forces will withdraw from Iridia once the Zorgans are defeated? How do we know this isn't just a ploy for human expansion? Carter met her gaze unflinchingly. You have my word and the word of the Terran Republic. 
We seek no territory or conquest, only to protect the innocent and maintain galactic stability. Once Iridia is secure, we will depart immediately. A tense silence hung in the air as the Council deliberated. Finally, Councillor Sath nodded reluctantly. Very well, Representative Carter. The Council accepts your offer of assistance, with the condition that all human forces withdraw from Iridia upon the Zorgan's defeat. But mark my words, if you betray this trust, there will be consequences. Carter inclined his head. Understood, Councillor, you have my assurance. With a curt nod to the Iridian delegation, Carter strode from the chamber, already activating his communicator. Carter to Earth Command, we have a situation. As the Council session adjourned in a flurry of activity, Corvus slumped in his seat, his earlier defiance replaced by exhaustion and fear. He could only pray that the human reinforcements would arrive in time. On the surface of Iridia, the once peaceful streets had become a war zone. Zorgon troops clad in menacing black armor marched through the rubble-strewn avenues, their weapons spitting plasma fire at any Iridian forces that dared resist. Civilians ran for their lives, seeking shelter in underground bunkers as their homes and businesses burned. The Iridian military, caught off guard by the sudden invasion, fought bravely but were quickly overwhelmed. Their defences crumbled under the relentless Zorgon assault, and they were forced to retreat, leaving more and more of the planet in enemy hands. In the command centre beneath the capital city, Corvus pored over holographic maps of the battlefield, his feathers damp with sweat. The situation was deteriorating by the minute, and he knew that without help, Iridia would fall. A young Iridian officer approached, his face grim. Counselor, our forces in the eastern sector have been overrun. The Zorgans are advancing on the capital. Corvus closed his eyes, feeling the weight of his people's fate pressing down on him. What of our civilian population? Chair evacuation is underway, but, the officer hesitated, there are still many trapped in the combat zones. We're doing all we can, but... Corvus slammed his fist on the console, frustration and despair warring within him. They were losing ground by the second, and the death toll was mounting. The Zorgons showed no mercy, slaughtering combatants and civilians alike. A flicker of hope ignited in Corvus's chest as he remembered Carter's promise of aid. The human fleet was on its way, but would they arrive in time? Could the combined might of Iridia and Earth turn the tide against the Zorgon onslaught? As the command center shook with the impact of distant explosions, Corvus steeled himself for the battles to come. The fate of his world hung in the balance, and he would fight to his last breath to defend it. All he could do now was hold the line and pray that the humans would be their salvation. For if they failed, Iridia would fall, and the galaxy would tremble before the might of the Zorgon war machine. The bridge of the TSS Valiant buzzed with activity, as Donald Carter pored over the latest intelligence reports. The holographic displays painted a grim picture of the Zorgan invasion's true scope. Carter's brow furrowed as he realized the attack on Iridia was just the tip of the iceberg. Lieutenant Commander Reeves, take a look at this, Carter called out, gesturing to the data. The Zorgans have hit multiple council worlds simultaneously. They're spreading our forces thin. Marcus Reeves, a seasoned officer with a sharp mind, stepped closer to examine the reports. His eyes widened as he took in the information. Sir, this level of coordination, it's unprecedented. They must have been planning this for years. Carter nodded, his jaw set. Agreed, and look at the precision of their strikes. They knew exactly where to hit each world to maximize damage and minimize resistance. It's as if they had inside knowledge of the Council's defenses. Reeves met Carter's gaze, a flicker of realization in his eyes. You don't think... Zorgan spies within the Council itself, Carter finished the thought, his voice grim. It's the only explanation for their uncanny intel. The two men fell silent for a moment, the weight of the revelation hanging heavy in the air. Carter broke the silence, his voice filled with determination. We need to expose these spies, Reeves. If we can root them out, we can cut off the Zorgans' information pipeline and level the playing field. Reeves nodded, 
his mind already racing. I have a few ideas, sir. We can start by analyzing communication patterns and cross-referencing them with the timing of the attacks. If we can identify any suspicious transmissions... Do it, Carter ordered. We need to move fast. The Council needs to know they've been compromised. As Reeves set to work, Carter turned his attention to the view screen, where the lush green world of Iridia grew larger by the second. The Zorgan fleet hung in orbit like a swarm of angry hornets, their ships bristling with weapons. All hands battle stations, Carter announced over the shipwide comm. Prepare to engage the enemy. The Valiant shuddered as its powerful engines propelled it forward, the rest of the human fleet falling into formation behind it. Carter's fingers danced across the console, priming the ship's advanced weaponry. Lock targets and fire at will, he commanded, his voice steady. The void of space erupted in a dazzling display of light and fury as the human ships opened fire. High-energy plasma beams and kinetic projectiles slammed into the Zorgon fleet, their advanced shielding technology absorbing the brunt of the assault. The Zorgans returned fire, their weapons carving molten scars across the hulls of the human ships. But the Terran vessels held fast, their own shields shimmering under the onslaught. Carter gripped the arms of his chair as the Valiant shuddered under the impact of enemy fire. Concentrate fire on their flagship, he ordered, his eyes locked on the massive Zorgan battleship at the heart of the enemy formation. The human fleet maneuvered with practiced precision, pouring a relentless barrage into the Zorgan flagship's shields. The alien vessel's defenses held for a moment, then flickered and died under the sustained assault. Shields down, Reeves reported, triumph in his voice. The flagship is vulnerable. Carter was already on his feet, striding towards the bridge's exit. Prep a boarding party, we're going in. Minutes later, Carter and a hand-picked team of marines stood in the Valiant's hangar bay, clad in sleek power armor and armed to the teeth. The ship shuddered as it latched onto the Zorgan flagship, cutting through its hull with high-intensity plasma torches. As the boarding hatch hissed open, Carter raised his pulse rifle and charged forward, his marines close behind. The Zorgon crew, caught off guard by the sudden incursion, fell before the human onslaught. Carter pressed forward his armor's HUD guiding him towards the ship's bridge. He could hear the sounds of battle echoing through the corridors as his marines engaged the enemy. On the surface of Iridia, Councillor Corvus watched in awe as human dropships streaked through the atmosphere, their hulls glowing with the heat of re-entry. The ships touched down in the heart of the Iridian capital, disgorging squads of power-armored soldiers. The human troops moved with a speed and precision that left Corvus breathless. Their energy weapons cut through the Zorgon lines like a hot knife through butter, while their tactical expertise allowed them to outmaneuver and outflank the enemy at every turn. Corvus felt a surge of hope as he watched the humans push the Zorgons back street by street. The invaders, who had seemed so unstoppable just hours before, now fell back in disarray before the human advance. Counselor, a voice crackled over Corvus's communicator. It was Carter, his words punctuated by the sounds of gunfire. We've secured the Zorgan commander. We're extracting now with intel on their plans. Corvus felt a rush of gratitude towards the human leader. Thank you, Representative Carter. Your people have given us a fighting chance. But even as the words left his beak, a new transmission cut through the comm channel. It was Reeves, his voice tight with urgency. Sir, we've just received word from Earth. The Zorgons have launched a massive attack on our homeworld. Our defences were caught unprepared. Carter felt his blood run cold. With the bulk of Earth's military spread across the galaxy, he knew their home was vulnerable. The Zorgons had played them all for fools. The human commander closed his eyes, the weight of the impossible choice bearing down on him. Continue the fight on Iridia, or rush back to defend Earth. The fate of two worlds hung in the balance and time was running out. Donald Carter paced the bridge of the TSS Valiant, his mind racing as he weighed the impossible choice before him. Earth, his home, was under attack, its defences caught off guard by the Zorgon onslaught. But here on Iridia, the battle was far from over. The Iridians needed him, 
needed the support of his troops to hold back the invaders. He turned to face his officers, his voice heavy with the weight of his decision. We have to split our forces. Earth needs us, but we can't abandon the Iridians. Not now. Reeves stepped forward, his brow furrowed. Sir, with all due respect, Earth should be our priority. Our people are dying down there. Carter met his gaze, his jaw set. I know, Reeves. That's why I'm sending you back with the bulk of the fleet. Take command of the Earth Defense Force. Hold the line until I can join you. Reeves nodded, understanding the gravity of his mission. And what about you, sir? I'll stay here with a smaller contingent, help the Iridians fortify their defenses, and root out any remaining Zorgon infiltrators. We can't let them gain a foothold in this sector. The bridge crew exchanged glances, some nodding in agreement, others clearly uneasy with the decision. Carter could see the doubt in their eyes, the question of whether he was prioritizing an alien world over his own. He addressed them all, his voice firm. I know some of you may disagree with my choice, but remember, we're not just fighting for Earth anymore. We're fighting for the freedom of the entire galaxy. If we let the Zorgans win here, it's only a matter of time before they come for us all. Corvus, who had been listening silently, spoke up. Representative Carter, your willingness to stand with us in our darkest hour is a testament to humanity's strength and honor. Your people will be remembered as heroes on Iridia. Carter nodded, grateful for the Iridian's support. Let's get to work, then. We have a planet to save. As Reeves and the majority of the human fleet prepared to depart for Earth, Carter turned his attention to the task at hand. He worked closely with Corvus and the Iridian military leaders, analyzing the planet's defenses and identifying potential weaknesses. Together they pored over intelligence reports and intercepted Zorgon communications, searching for any clues about the enemy's plans. It was during one of these late-night sessions that they stumbled upon a shocking discovery. Look at this, Carter said, pointing to a series of encrypted transmissions. These messages date back years, long before the invasion, and the language, it's not just Zorgon. Corvus leaned closer, his eyes widening as he recognized the distinct dialects of several council races. By the stars, the Zorgans have been manipulating us all along, sowing discord, turning us against each other. Carter nodded grimly. They've been playing the long game, weakening the council from within, but now we have proof. We need to bring this to the other members, show them the truth. Corvus agreed, and they immediately set to work preparing their findings for presentation. It wouldn't be easy convincing the fractured council to unite in the face of such a revelation, but they had to try. Light years away, Reeves and his fleet emerged from hyperspace to find themselves face to face with a Zorgan ambush. The enemy ships, hidden in the shadow of a nearby moon, opened fire without warning. Evasive maneuvers, Reeves shouted, gripping the arms of his command chair as the deck shuddered beneath him. All ships, return fire! The space around them erupted in a dazzling display of plasma beams and missile trails as the two fleets clashed. Reeves, his tactical mind working overtime, quickly assessed the situation. The Zorgans had the advantage of numbers and position, but the human ships were faster and more maneuverable. If they could just break through the enemy lines, Concentrate fire on their flanks, Reeves ordered, his fingers flying across the tactical display. Draw them out, then hit them with everything we've got. The human ships moved as one, their weapons tearing into the Zorgon formation. The enemy returned fire, their shields absorbing the brunt of the assault, but Reeves wasn't about to back down. He led his fleet in a daring charge, his ships weaving through the Zorgon lines, taking hits but refusing to yield. They focused their fire on the enemy's weakest points, slowly but surely whittling away at their defences. It was a costly manoeuvre, and Reeves felt a pang of guilt as he watched several of his ships vanish in balls of fire, their crews sacrificing themselves for the greater good. But in the end, the gambit paid off. The Zorgan formation broke, their ships scattering in disarray. Reeves seized the opportunity, ordering his fleet to punch through the gap and make for Earth. They emerged from the battle battered and bruised, but still in the fight. 
As they approached Earth, Reeves felt his heart sink. The planet was under siege, Zorgan ships swarming around it like angry hornets. He could see the flashes of explosions on the surface, the telltale signs of a ground invasion in progress. He steeled himself, pushing aside his fear and doubt. Earth needed him, needed every ship and every soldier he could muster. He opened a channel to the Earth Defense Force, ready to take command and coordinate a counterattack. But even as he began issuing orders, a strange signal cut through the comm chatter. It was a message, encrypted and untraceable, addressed directly to him. Commander Reeves? The voice was distorted, impossible to identify. I have information that could change the course of this war. Meet me at these coordinates, come alone. Trust no one. Reeves hesitated, suspicion warring with desperation in his mind. It could be a trap, a Zorgon ploy to lure him away from the battle. But if there was even a chance that this mysterious informant could help them... He made his decision, his jaw set with determination. He would meet with this stranger, hear what they had to say. If it could give humanity an edge, it was worth the risk. As he prepared to depart, he couldn't shake the feeling that he was standing on the precipice of something momentous. The fate of Earth, of the entire galaxy, hung in the balance. And he would do whatever it took to tip the scales in their favor. Lieutenant Commander Reeves stepped into the dimly lit alleyway, his hand resting on the pistol at his hip. The coordinates he'd received led him here, to this seedy corner of the city, far from prying eyes. He scanned the shadows, searching for any sign of the informant. Commander Reeves, a hooded figure emerged from the darkness, his voice low and rasping. I am Krasithor. Reeves tensed, his grip tightening on his weapon. Show yourself. The figure reached up, slowly pulling back his hood to reveal a scarred reptilian face. Piercing yellow eyes met Reeves' gaze, and he instantly recognized the distinctive features of a Zorgon. You're one of them, Reeves growled, his finger inching towards the trigger. Give me one good reason why I shouldn't blast you right here. Krasthor held up his hands in a placating gesture. I am not your enemy, Commander. I am here to help you end this war. Reeves barked a harsh laugh. Help us. Your kind has been slaughtering us by the millions. Why should I trust a word you say? The Zorgon sighed, his shoulders slumping. Because, like you, I am tired of the bloodshed. I have seen the toll this war has taken on both our peoples, and I know the truth behind our empire's aggression. Reeves hesitated. His curiosity peaked despite his mistrust. What truth? Krasthor stepped closer, his voice dropping to a whisper. Our homeworld is dying, Commander. We've stripped it of its resources, and now we face extinction. The Empire's expansion is driven by desperation, not conquest. The human commander frowned, processing this revelation. It didn't excuse the Zorgon's atrocities, but it did offer a new perspective on their motives. Why come to me with this? Reeves asked, his tone still guarded. Because I believe you're the key to ending this conflict, Krasthor replied. I can give you the coordinates of our main supply base. If you destroy it, you'll cripple our war effort and force the Empire to the negotiating table. Reeves's eyes narrowed. And what's in it for you? The Zorgan met his gaze unflinchingly. A chance to save my people from themselves, to find a path forward that doesn't lead to our mutual destruction. For a long moment, Reeves weighed his options. He knew he was taking a risk by trusting this Zorgan defector, but if there was even a chance to end the war. All right, he said at last, lowering his weapon. Give me the coordinates. Krasthor nodded, reaching into his cloak to retrieve a data chip. Everything you need is here, but I warn you, Commander, the base will be heavily guarded. You'll need to strike fast and hard. Reeves took the chip, slipping it into his pocket. We'll get it done, but if this is a trap... It's not, Krasthor assured him. I'm putting my life in your hands, Commander. I only ask that you use this information wisely. With that, the Zorgon melted back into the shadows, leaving Reeves alone with his thoughts. He knew he'd just made a deal with the devil, but if it could bring an end to this nightmare. He turned on his heel and strode out of the alley, his mind already racing with plans for the attack. 
he had a war to win, and he'd take help wherever he could find it. Hours later, Reeves stood on the bridge of his flagship, watching as his fleet dropped out of hyperspace on the edge of the Zorgon system. The supply base loomed before them, a massive sprawling complex bristling with defences. All ships commence attack, Reeves ordered, his voice steady. Target their shield generators and weapon emplacements. The human fleet surged forward, their weapons blazing to life as they engaged the Zorgon defences. Fighters swarmed from the carriers, darting and weaving through the enemy fire as they sought out weak points in the base's armour. It was a brutal, bloody battle, with losses mounting on both sides. But the humans pressed on, driven by a grim determination to see this through to the end. Finally, after what felt like an eternity, the Zorgan shields flickered and died, leaving the base vulnerable. Reeves wasted no time, ordering his ships to concentrate their fire on the central hub. The complex exploded in a blinding flash of light, the shockwave rippling out through space. Cheers erupted across the human fleet as they watched the Zorgon installation crumble, knowing they'd just struck a decisive blow. But even as they celebrated, Reeves knew this was only the beginning. With their supply lines cut, the Zorgon forces on Earth would be weakened, but they were far from defeated. He opened a channel to the Earth Defense Force, his voice filled with a renewed sense of purpose. This is Lieutenant Commander Reeves. We've taken out the Zorgon supply base. I'm bringing the fleet back to Earth. It's time to end this, once and for all. On Iridia, Donald Carter and Councillor Corvus received word of Reeves's victory, a much-needed boost to their flagging spirits. They'd been locked in a bitter ground war with the Zorgan invaders for weeks, trading blood for every inch of soil. This is the break we've been waiting for, Carter said, a glint of hope in his eyes. If we can take out their command post, we might just be able to force a surrender. Corvus nodded, his feathered brow furrowed. Agreed, but it won't be easy. The Zorgons will fight to the last soldier to hold that position. Carter gripped his rifle, his jaw set with determination. Then we'll just have to fight harder, assemble our best troops, we're going in. The combined human Iridian force moved out, their steps heavy with the weight of the task before them. They knew many of them wouldn't be coming back, but they also knew the price of failure. The battle was a blur of blood and fire, with soldiers falling on both sides. Carter fought like a man possessed, his weapons spitting death as he led the charge into the heart of the Zorgon defences. They pushed deeper into the command post, room by room, corridor by corridor. The Zorgons fought with a savage ferocity, but the humans and Iridians matched them blow for blow. And then, in a moment of grim clarity, Carter saw Corvus cut down a group of Iridian soldiers from behind, his energy blade flashing as he slaughtered his own troops. Corvus! Carter roared, his voice raw with betrayal. What have you done? Oh, the Iridian counselor turned, his eyes glinting with a madness Carter had never seen before. What I've always done, human, served my true masters. With a snarl of rage, Carter lunged at the traitor, but Corvus was too quick. He dodged the human's attack and fled, disappearing into the chaos of the battle. Carter staggered, his mind reeling from the revelation. Corvus had been a Zorgan spy all along, orchestrating this entire war from the shadows. The depth of his treachery was staggering. But there was no time to dwell on it now. Carter rallied his troops, pressing on towards the Zorgan command center. They had to end this, no matter the cost. In the end, they took the command post, but at a terrible price. The ground was littered with the bodies of the fallen, human and Iridian alike. Carter himself was badly wounded, his armor scorched and battered. But even as he lay there, his life bleeding out onto the alien soil, he knew he had to finish what he'd started. With his last breath, he activated his communicator, broadcasting Corvus's treachery to the Galactic Council. And then he closed his eyes, his duty done, his sacrifice complete. In the aftermath of the war, the galaxy struggled to come to terms with the devastation. The Zorgan Empire was shattered, its people scattered and demoralized, but the Council races had paid a heavy price for their victory, their worlds left in ruin and their populations decimated. Humanity, once hailed as saviors, 
now found themselves viewed with suspicion and fear. Their reputation as warriors and conquerors, forged in the crucible of battle, overshadowed their noble deeds. And as the uneasy peace settled over the galaxy, many wondered if the scars of this conflict would ever truly heal. For in the end, there were no true victors in war, only survivors left to pick up the pieces and try to rebuild. Donald Carter, the hero who had given everything for the cause, was laid to rest on Earth, his body borne through the streets of his hometown in a solemn procession. Millions came to pay their respects, to honor the man who had saved their world. But even as they celebrated his life, Carter's spirit found no rest, for he knew deep in his heart that this was only the beginning, that humanity's thirst for conflict, for glory on the battlefield, would always be its greatest strength and its ultimate downfall. And so he watched from beyond the veil, a silent guardian over the world he'd loved and the people he'd died to protect, waiting for the day when he would be called upon again to lead humanity to its next great destiny or its final doom. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel, and for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.